episode of Between Us Girlies. I'm Bailey. I'm Casey. I'm Bran. I'm Lindsay. And today I will be starting off with the girly quote. Now this one is from Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. And I know you guys aren't Marvel fans, but this is from Wanda Maximoff. She's my favorite superhero. And okay, if you've seen the movie in context, you understand what it means. Out of context, it seems like really good. You break the rules and become a hero. I do and become the enemy. That doesn't seem fair. It doesn't. And like in context, she's <laughs> completely in the wrong. But I think like, I don't know. <laughs> do it anyways. Break the rules. Do it now. Ask for forgiveness later. That's my rule. Period. Okay. Right. So maybe that wasn't like inspiring. Just a little I'm inspired. I enjoyed it. I'm yeah. not sure if I'm inspired to do something good, but I, I guess <laughs> I'm inspired. Do it anyways. You know, like, look, I got a tattoo. Do it anyways. Just ask for forgiveness later. Who cares? If it's like legal, don't do Be it. Be a rule breaker. Exactly. I'm What's a rule the follower. like a quote from like forever ago when we were in high school that they like claimed Marilyn Monroe said it was like uh no good girls ever like followed the rules or there was like some quote that every single poster I, I just got it, like cringe like I you know what I'm talking like that about running through my veins mm-hmm. like the like, old 2012 Pinterest shit. yeah, yeah. It was like good girls never make history or something like so ridiculous fuck I had it I remember <laughs> it was like oh no I had it, it was like on like a actual like shadow box mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh, well so last week we had Gov Shapiro on Shapiro Shapiro <laughs> and last week we had a little life update mid episode um I'm unemployed <laughs> <laughs> they literally said jojo leave get out right now stand up you and me and i said okay got my suitcases um and drove back to philadelphia but <laughs> i know i'm like seem like cracked out or crazy right now but i am honestly in a good headspace like i started that job on my 23rd birthday so i was 22 when i applied for it i'm 27 now so i was there for five years and I feel like I'm a child experiencing the world again. Like I yeah. saw a sweet streeper. A, like, a, like I just like I'm enjoying my apartment. I'm getting parking spaces. You look great. Honestly. You really do. <laughs> I'm wearing a hat for the first time on the episode. I don't know. I just feel really good, which is so yeah, odd to that. say when you're unemployed. But like, I feel I'm like having the, yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was a chapter that went on like very long, and mm-hmm. I feel like it's time for your next one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when I look back at like what I was like when I was 20 it's just completely different obviously you grow in five years but I feel like I've grown so much like I remember when I first started my first paycheck if I was excited because it was going towards um polar plunge like I was like <laughs> I finally have money for polar plunge like let's go like that was like the only thing on my mind but like now mm-hmm. it's like bills and everything yeah um but I thought that was so interesting but I'm doing okay I'm doing all right I love that I'm just, I love like, that living life I feel like a I don't know like a new child in the world <laughs> <laughs> no I think one of my favorite girly quotes is by Casey Carradine, which is the universe has your back. And I truly have always believed in that ever since Casey told me that in like 2016. <laughs> um, and I think the universe fully has your back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you're doing great. Yeah, yeah. Like considering like I got let go and then the next day we interviewed Governor Shapiro. Like, how, like I couldn't be, I mean, I was upset, but like there mm-hmm. was so much more to look forward to. I'm like, I can't, I don't have time to dwell right now. Like there's so many other things going on in my life. I love your energy. (laughs) I feel like you've, we've all like reached a point in our lives where like work is work period. End Mm -hmm. of sentence. Mm -hmm. Work is what you do to pay your bills and live your life. And it is nothing more than that. So it's like, yeah, it sucked, but you have so much more going on that it's like, okay, this one small chapter is experiencing a hiccup or whatever, but everything else is flourishing. And Mm -hmm. I told my mom, like, I don't know the next time in my career, because I can't retire until my what, 70. Like, I don't know the next time in my career that I'm going to have a little break like this. Mm-hmm. I mean, my first, like, when I turned 16, my mother said, or maybe 15, she was like, we are going to, the, like, the school district, and you're getting your working papers. And McDonald's was my first job, like, right at, like, 15, 16. So it's like, I've al- I'm have always going to have this work ethic, but it's like, right now, I'm like, okay, I can stop, relax, and, like, take a look around. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I went on walks. I found, like, so many coffee shops around me. Like, it's just so... It's a good reset for you, mm-hmm. yeah. for sure. I enjoy that. it. So, not only that, I'm feeling great. <clears throat> I have a little crush. <laughs> I know. I don't know if he has a crush on me back, though. So, this is just a one-sided thing. But it feels good. Like, I'm, like, reliving life. Like, Stella got her groove back. Um, <laughs> but I do have a story. I don't know if I want to start this. So, Brandon and Lindsay saw my crush for the first time. And I haven't, like, talked about this guy. We like sure did. I, mm-hmm. it was I don't ever feel like this. But, like, I just have a crush on him. I'm going to set the scene. <laughs> So after we interview Governor Shapiro, we go out for drinks. Oh, that was the same day. Um, Me, Bailey, and Lindsay take my manager out on the town. We are walking into vinyl, and all of a sudden, Bailey runs into this gentleman that I know too, but 
I didn't know that they knew each other. I didn't didn't know this man at all. I didn't know that they knew each other like that. And when I say like that, like it was instant chemistry. I felt like I was watching Romeo and Juliet, like (laughs) two star-crossed lovers who were reigniting for the first time. I was like, oh, this is chaotic. We go into vinyl, you guys. I got to give it up to vinyl. I had no idea that what we were about to go into was the exact same night. And I mean that in the best way that we had in January. Ben Arsenal's playing again. (laughs) They walk right up to us and say, do you want a table? I said, of course. Oh my goodness. We get into this little private booth. Bailey is the full main character of this night. Not only were we in the literal center of everything, <laughs> we were. Bailey takes this man, sits down on this booth with him, and they are just chatting. What about? I don't know because yeah, what, I couldn't even talking? hear. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't even hear anything. Bailey is geeking it up with him. I'm like, oh, she's in love, and like it wasn't like. I feel like back in the day, like we would have been like, not trashy, but like very like dance floor makeout. It wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. Like you were very like elegant. Like you oh, had like no. your legs crossed. You had your long pony <laughs> in. Like your shoulder like looked stunning because you were in like a tube top. I was. And like mm-hmm. she was just like radiant. Like I was like, oh, this is this is magnetic. <laughs> yeah. So I was in love. It's crazy because vinyl loud as hell. We were by the front. I when I tell you, I couldn't hear the DJ, my surroundings. <laughs> like it was like. Well, I almost said horse tunnel. What's it called? Horse, uh, horse tunnel, blinders. Tunnel vision? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Mix those two together. Like, we were sitting there. My breast could have been out. My ponytail could have been off. I wouldn't have known because I was in such, like, it, it was, was, like, locked in. I That was, like, I that was love. Yeah. Is this, Bailey, is this the guy that you met over the summer and you told me about? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I was not there this night, but I do remember hearing about this guy before. So that does not surprise me that you embraced him because even yeah. back in July, you mm-hmm. were like, oh my God, I met this guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> And it was like such a like, what, I don't know. Oh my God. I'm like, I feel like I'm blushing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we were sitting there and like, it was just like, I've never felt love like that. Especially yeah. in a public place. Like I didn't know like you guys were there. Like I forgot Chris was there. Y'all were there. Forgot where I was. I don't think I said bye to you guys. You didn't. I feel like sometimes like, you're the person where I'll gravitate towards. I'm like, where's Bailey at? Like, what is Bailey doing? Mm-hmm. When I tell you that when I looked at you every single time, number one, what Brandon said is perfect. You looked so elegant just wow. sitting there with your legs crossed. I was like, Bailey is into this conversation. But when I looked around, you were gone. Yep. I said, oh, Bailey hopped up and left. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so there was, <laughs> there was so many people there. There were so many people, and you... You and Lindsay were the only girls. Like, low-key, like, it became a sausage fest. (laughs) One of our... This is now the second time that this has happened to me, and it's really dark. I went to hug a guy friend, Mm. and I felt his gun. And I said, oh, (laughs) Oh, no. no. (laughs) I said, okay, okay. Yeah. What's the drove me home. People were strapped in the club. Um, But I was so nervous because the music was, like house jungle music like it's not you're not hearing a single lyric and I know Lindsay doesn't love that I turn to Lindsay and she's like fully like vibing and I'm like Lindsay I'm really sorry like I know you don't like this DJ she's like I love it and she's just (laughs) riding out I was like oh we're wasted no blacked out like I can't tell you the thing is in the moment I remember I'm like this is such a good conversation I don't I Mm. can't tell you uh, the next day I was like what did we talk about no like that the, the night was crazy. It I literally really woke up the mm-hmm. next day. I had an emergency session with my therapist. Like that's how my night was going. I made a terrible choice. Well, it was an excellent choice for me, but it was a terrible choice in the long run that mm-hmm. night. And I don't regret it, yeah. but it was truly something that <laughs> I needed to not only repent to God about, but also talk to my therapist about how to move forward. What time so. did you call her? I was supposed to go out with Bailey during the day on Saturday. We wanted to have a little sister to time. To the St. Patty's. Yeah, we were going to mm. go to that St. Patty's event as well as the Espresso Martini Bar Crawl. But um, Bailey ended up going without me because she's a trooper. And I milked the entire day. I was like, oh, I'm going to come. Yeah, I'm getting in the shower. I'm doing this. But I was sobbing at home mm-hmm. thinking about my terrible choices. She's like, I'm mm. getting in the shower. So I said, oh, let me get in the shower. Mm. So I show up to the to the hangout and I don't see Lindsay there. But I completely understand that. Yeah. After all, uh, yeah. I could have let you know. But like, but I also didn't need to have my ass out there. I was like. We really should have just stayed. I really should have stayed. Because I was like, it's such a nice day. And so like, it's like Aaron Express, like all that. I wasn't mm-hmm. doing any of that. But I went to Two Robbers in Fishtown. Lovely establishment. Mm. I love it. Uh, But I need to cut back on drinking, so. Well, I could go there and get water. Let's give it up. Yeah, let's give it up. Um, (laughs) Did you chuck six Celsius before this episode, (laughs) Bailey? No. (laughs) 
I have <laughs> never seen you so high energy. I oh, I love it. it oh, so I did have a prime. I, I just drank a prime. And I, yeah. Okay. I, I want, there is oh, nothing wrong with it. Excuse me, I'll have a job. I love it. You just said six <laughs> things in one breath. You're like, I'm going to stop drinking. Actually, it's fine. Give it up. Okay. Like, <laughs> so we were, I was at two robbers posting multiple Instagram that stories. That burger looked fucking crazy. What I would do for a smash burger. That's probably one of the best smash burgers I've had. Like, it's so oh. good. And the fries were okay. But... Um, so our friend who was up supposedly at vinyl the night before, he DMs me on the story I had up of two robbers saying, how was it? And I said, oh my God. I, lo-. and I thought he was talking about two robbers. I was like, I loved it. I'm mad. It took, took me so long to check it out. The food, drinks and vibes were 10 out of 10. Me having a full ad. And then he says, oh no, LOL. I meant the dude you went back with on Friday. How was it? <laughs> when I tell you, I've never felt like a fool in my life. Like, I, because I completely forgot he was there. I was going to say, do you remember seeing him? I do, but like, you know, when your mind has like those flashbacks, I remember like a clip of me saying, oh my God, hey. Mm. Was this gun guy? Uh huh. Okay. I can't <laughs> explain to you guys enough that Bailey was the center of attention. Mm-hmm. If you lived in Philadelphia and you were at vinyl <laughs> that night, you saw Bailey leave. You saw Bailey enter. You saw Bailey in the past, present, and future. Like, <laughs> like, I feel like you leaving was like getting into a limo, like out in front. Like I just always is that. too. Yeah. When like yeah. when Bailey leaves the group early, it doesn't happen all the time. But like it never it's happens. It's a statement. Like Bailey's usually the straggler. She stays out the longest usually. Mm-hmm. So when Thank she's you. making a move, she's either going through it or she's got <laughs> a lot going on in a good way. And like people notice in a crowd. Mm-hmm. It's like one a.m. and Bailey's going home. Oh no! I was there for like thirty minutes tops. I feel like. <laughs> Uh-huh. Like it was wild. I feel like you needed this night. I did need it. Yeah, like, you did. After that week, I was like, "Wow!" Like I really, I feel so born again. Your energy is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. You're like radiating. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my god, I have a glow to me. Um, <laughs> but with all that comes tumbling down. So I got an email. So this is gonna segue like simply off topic. But out of the four of us, I was the only one that was in Greek life in college, and sophomore I did Greek life because like I've said multiple times like when I came to the school like I had no friends I've always dreamed of being in a sorority like I, ugh, I'm like, ugh, it's so cringy thinking about it like I want to be in, like alpha phi however the school I went to there was only two sororities and two fraternities on campus <laughs> and it's either one or the other but by like sophomore year maybe, yeah sophomore year I already had my group of friends like I met friends in the sorority friends outside I tried dropping multiple multiple times so with that I stopped paying my dues I was still in the sorority, but I stopped paying my dues around junior year because I'm not going to pay to have friends anymore. I already have them. Like, I was already 21 at that point. I was already going out. Like, what the... F- like, And I already said I didn't want to be it and they wouldn't let me leave. Now, fast forward to 2024, March. I get an email from the current treasurer of that sorority saying, hey, you owe so-and-so so amount. Please, like, email me tomorrow or I'm sending you two collections. Go ahead. Send me to collections because I'm not paying shit. I didn't want to be in a sorority in 2014 and 2020. 10 years? Like, no way, Josue. Like, <laughs> that's fucking bullshit. So I just want to say that. Sorry if you're listening, but not sorry. You know, it's a beautiful segue, Bailey. Beautiful. <laughs> now, you're in, you're in sorority due to debt. I'm in student loan debt. And you know what? For what? Because I paid a few hundred grand for, you know, a fucking degree. I got two of them. And... I get revoked my campus email access five years at your school. I'm still paying off loans. I'm going to be paying off these loans until I die. Mm -hmm. And I can't keep a fucking student email. I am on a flight to Miami on Wednesday. And I'm like, okay, no, God, do some work. Go to log into my email. I'm like, great. One of those 120 days, I have to fucking redo my password again. All right, no big deal. Go in to type everything in. It says your account doesn't exist. I'm like, (laughs) one more time. (laughs) Your account doesn't exist. (laughs) One more time. Your account doesn't exist. What the fuck? I get on the plane at this point. I go on airplane mode. I'm done with this shit. (laughs) Get to Miami. And I realized, oh shit, I really need to get into my email. There was something due today. Not working. So I call the IT desk and I say, hey, y'all, um, I can't get into my email. Usually you guys like help me reset the password. They're like, oh, like when did you graduate? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like uh, t- 
technically 2018, but then I did a master's, so like kind of 2020. And they were like, okay, well, yeah, our emails are set to expire like six months after graduation. I was like, well, wait a minute. I've been getting emails since 2024, so when did this process go through? Mm -hmm. They were like, oh, we like passed the rule in November, so six months after, I was like, that would be April. I was like, and it's March. I'm going back and forth with them. Bottom line, your email's gone. I'm like, okay, we need to escalate this. I was like, (laughs) you don't understand. Unlike most normal people who graduated college and didn't use their email, they just made a Gmail, Mm -hmm. I didn't do that. And I didn't do that for a reason, honestly, because it takes eight minutes to get into my email. It's a really safe email. So I'm like, this is great to use for all my businesses and stuff. So I thought. So now I have my student loans are in this email. Thanks again, Jefferson. Um, All my card information, TD, everything in that email. All my social media accounts are in that email. I'm like, what am I going to (laughs) do? And I'm in Miami. So I call and they're like, okay, we're going to escalate this above. Um, and they end up getting me access for four days. I just lost it an hour ago. No, yep. no. Which is fine. Okay. It gave me enough time. I was able to sort mostly everything out. So if you've been emailing my Jefferson email, do not email it anymore because it is not me. It ain't me. Um, <laughs> yep. So that was hell <laughs> on absolute earth. So... I've beef. I've I've a bone to pick with our with our university. That's mm. hell. The way they sent us to collections this week. <laughs> they said we're on your ass. We got served. <laughs> we really did. <laughs> they said enough is enough. I saw your story. I don't remember what it was on Instagram, take whatever Snapchat, and it was like you lost your account. I was going to email you and be like, I'm so sorry. And then I was like, <laughs> he does not. Or I was going to text you and I was like, he does not need one more fucking notification on his phone. I'll just send my love through the air. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm thinking of you, Brandon. Let, Last me just, draw. Hey, let me just give you all a little life update. So I'm currently in the middle of about eight different brand deals. Okay, yay, get my bag. Cool. I've also been traveling like it's my fucking job. Yeah, I go to Miami last week. Woo, party. It was fun. I don't really have like much to report, honestly. Like really? it was Miami. I kind of did more of like drunk at dinner. That's been like mm-hmm. my new vibe. Like I just love getting drunk at dinner. And going to bed. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was more like that wave. It also torrentially downpoured. Um, So I wish I had more to report, but had a great time. Saw some Philly people, um, but not really like any like chaotic fun stories. But don't worry, I'm not holding back. Because I decide after Miami to fly to New York because Serena Kerrigan's birthday party and I missed it last year. And I was like, I can't miss Serena's birthday party again. So I'll fly into New York from Miami. I get... First of all, my flight's delayed two and a half hours because it's pouring rain. So there's that. Um, Then my luggage gets stuck on the carrier. There's that. I should have known at this point. I should have gotten to the Newark Liberty Airport and turned around. I should have gotten on the Newark Penn Station back to Philly. But no, let's have a night. I get to New York. I go to Carly's house. We get ready for dinner, have an amazing sushi dinner, whatnot. Serena's party, so much fun. We decide, I want to like go out like I want a vinyl night like I don't want to go to a sports bar I want to put my sunglasses on and I want to fucking dance Mm -hmm. like I want to be in a booth that I didn't pay for partying my ass off so my girlfriends are like oh let's go to catchy shooby some ugly ass name of some (laughs) ugly ass club because they're ugly as fuck for what they did to us we get to the door (laughs) and it is just I have like the ick on mid clubs whose doormen take their jobs way too fucking Mm, seriously. If I have to ask you, like, what manager is working, which I wasn't the one asking this because I'm not from New York, it's it's too deep for me. Getting drunk will never be that serious to me that, like, you have to pull out a list and everything. Like, I understand that there's people who spend thousands of dollars on one night out, couldn't be me, Mm -hmm. but it's never that serious. Mm -hmm. It is freezing we are waiting outside shaking i'm like can we please go anywhere else this is humiliating Mm. so we go and meet hallie and jazz at this bar called bleaker street now bless my girls hallie and jazz but they are not club girls they are sports bar girls we we differ in that sense so i go into this bar it's like a full-blown tradesman's like overload okay very would have been so fun to day drink at but keep Mm. in mind Not only do I want to party, I'm in a leather jacket. I'm in Steve Madden boots. I don't want to be drinking a pitcher of beer. I want to dance. (laughs) So I am just so overwhelmed at this point. But Carly's like, wait, across the street, there's a fun house party. Now that is my juju. 
that it, that is good enough for me. We get in, we're with like a group of eight people at this point, this tiny little elevator. We all know that it's a bad idea. Like we're all giggling as we get in. I think there's a sign that says maximum person five. Let's just put eight of us in there. We're gi- we're giggling, ha, skinny, we all fit. Because sometimes the rules you can break. Like I said, yeah. the opening. And we're can- going to floor four. Yeah. It's like nothing in New York world. So I'm like, this is fine. Doesn't move. <laughs> Doesn't move. Okay, let's open the door and get out. Doesn't open. <laughs> doesn't open now my anxiety's been a little rough y'all so I had this I don't know maybe maybe I need to start drinking more because (laughs) the alcohol in my system actually prevented me from going into full-on panic I thought about it for a second I was like oh have a panic attack Brandon I'm like you know what Hallie's got this she's having a freak down I'm like you know what I'm gonna be the one taking selfies having fun giggling whatever we're stuck in that elevator for what feels like hours but we get out in like 10 minutes we go up to this party and I'm sitting in the kitchen pouring myself a fat mixed drink. I see someone from Philly that I know. I'm like in my element. I'm chatting it up with everybody. I'm having a great time. My night is finally going great. But then everyone wants to leave at three in the morning. So I'm in the Uber and I'm just thinking about my life. And I'm just like, hmm, getting up tomorrow when I'm hungover sounds like really miz. And then trying to get on this train, like overstimulated. And then I see that Amtrak robbery is $133. And then I see, oh, if I take the train at 4.15 a.m., it's 20 bucks. That's in an hour. I'm like, could I just stick this out? <laughs> I get to Carly's house. I start packing my things. She's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, mama's going home. Back to Philly. Here I go. I was delirious on this train. I go to the wrong station. I'm pulling the door. Girl, I'm freaking oh out. I see this little guy. He's going on the train too. I go, you have to help me. He's like, oh, I'm on the same train as you. We get on together. I'm like, bye, girl. <laughs> I have this full luggage with me. I've never had a suitcase so big on an Amtrak with me. I can't lift it up. I go, this is going on the seat next to me. I was I was like, I can't fall asleep, though, because it, this train goes all the way to Virginia. Imagine if I woke up in Virginia. Oh my God. So I had to stay awake. And like towards the end, that was not going well. But anyway, I texted Lindsay. I said, if you hear someone come in, don't be alarmed. It's me. I got home at six in the morning and it was the best choice I ever made. I slept until 1130. I woke up. I was like, oh, I'm so glad to be here. Where is La Colombe? It was great. (laughs) But yeah, I had a very, very hectic trip. How was your anxiety flying? Like since flying from. So I think that's kind of why I didn't have like too much going on in Miami because like. I weirdly was still so anxious. Like Mm. that panic attack, like fucked me up, Mm. y'all. Like I have, I feel, I just told Lindsay on the way here. I was like, I feel like I'm finally starting to feel normal again. I didn't get anxious on the plane, but the night before I was spiraling so hard about, like I was getting anxious about having anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I woke up because I was grinding my teeth so hard in my sleep. Like I woke up with a headache and that Mm. headache resurfaced on the way to Miami. So like I just started to feel like really sick and I was like getting in my own head. Celsius gave me a plus one, but I was like, I want to go alone because I felt so bad for what I did to Casey. (laughs) And I was like, if I have a bad meltdown, at least I don't have to worry about it ruining someone else's time, Mm -hmm. which was good. But at the same time, I feel like I was had too much alone time in my head that it tripped me up a little bit. But I feel like, you know, it's a journey. Um, I'm going to Vegas uh, this week. Uh, I leave in two days. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm so excited. Yeah, very excited. So yeah, just a lot going on right now. But that's me. (laughs) There's my updates. Oh my God, are you excited for Vegas? I am. I'm bringing Miss Lindsay with me. I'm scared. Uh, which means, Bailey, you're up next. Here and I told Bailey last night, I have a few more trips coming up. We're just going to go on a cycle. And then we can recap mm-hmm. them all every yeah. podcast. Next up, <laughs> county jail. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we have a lot. We have a lot going on. I think all of our lives are kind of in shambles. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> well, guys, we are going to do a pyramid ranking. And let's rank the best girlies of Disney Channel shows from the mm-hmm. early 2000s. Um, when Disney was in its prime. Yeah. 100%. There is just nothing that will compare to like when we would come home from school and it would be hit after hit mm-hmm. after hit on the lineup. Like yeah. every show, Lizzie McGuire, That's So Raven. Like, And now their shows are just so tragic. It like makes me sad that I used to be a ride or die Disney That's girl. so crazy. You could just stay on that same channel for probably like, Four hours and you it was a hit after hit after hit like you really have to was. scroll because it's like mm-hmm. up next like and Lizzie the commercials McGuire. were only ever disney commercials like it was either wow. for new movies or new 
it was just, it was literally a children's network. Yeah. And they just really don't make it like that anymore. I always want to be in the, like, the transition where, like, those kids were jumping on a trampoline before oh. the, <laughs> before the <laughs> original movie. Like, yeah. I always want to be in that, like, little commercial. I was like, I'm going to mm-hmm. get there one day. Do you guys mm-hmm. remember Pass the Plate? Yeah. When they yes. would, like, I, I love always wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> They also used to do these little like side things where they would like show people's collections of stuff. I remember this mm-hmm. one girl had a snow globe collection. I was oh, like, yeah. so cute. That. Mm-hmm. Who was the girl that I said I hated last night on the phone um, from Disney Channel? Oh. Um, I'm trying to rack my brain. Life with it. Derek. I don't fuck with her either. Ren. Oh, we said we liked her. I like Ren. Um, you said I a lot. <laughs> I can't remember. We we were talking about this, and I I remember being like, there was one girl on Disney Channel that I couldn't stand. You said Miranda from Lisa McGuire. Oh, that was it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At the bottom, I think on the bottom of the girlies of Disney Channel, Miranda was a hater. She was. Like, growing up is realizing Miranda was a hater. Mm -hmm. She was always coming for Lizzie's neck. And listen, I get it. Lizzie was a dynamic female character. (laughs) And she had, you know, some imperfections. But I feel like Miranda was just like, she was holding Lizzie back sometimes. Mm -hmm. She was was always like pissed off about her and Gordo. Like, she, Miranda was, like, constantly pressed. Mm-hmm. She you just wasn't what? the best, like, pairing for Lizzie. I feel like yeah. Lizzie was a flourishing, like, she really could have gone far, and Miranda was honestly holding her back. Yeah. You're right. Like, yeah. Kate in that? Like, Kate was a bitch, but low-key, I think I like Kate better than Miranda. Because here's the thing. Miranda is, like, your typical hater. She would get hype when she would get an opportunity to social climb with Kate, but when Lizzie got the opportunity, she'd be like, I can't believe you're hanging out with Kate. Mm-hmm. Like, Miranda, the, calm down. The reason we have respect for Kate is because Kate was a bitch and she owned it. Yeah. She was like, I'm a bitch, you're an alpha repeater. But yeah. Miranda over here was like, oh, I'm, I'm just Lizzie's best friend. I'm so nice. And she wasn't. And that's how, that's when people are snakes. Mm-hmm. Wow, I didn't realize how much I hated Miranda, but I hate her too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mean, she has no redeeming qualities. And honestly... And I'm, I'm picturing this one particular outfit. It's red. That. Does everybody know what I'm red talking about? Orange? She looked horrid. Whoever whoever styled her should be fired and shot. Like it was Lord. it was dreadful. It was dreadful. I think that says something too, like about how they probably like designed the outfits for some characters. Like they put her in wonky ass shit so you'd have a narrative about her. Mm. Mm-hmm. I feel like an honorary mm. mention. I honestly thought Lizzie's little brother was a girly. He was always getting Matt. into Matt. antics, yeah. mm-hmm. but he was Matt. fun. Honestly, so was her dad. Oh, he yeah. was a girly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I loved her family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I connected with the show. I was like, you guys are great. I loved Lenny. I loved all of them. <laughs> Their intro was good too with the big balls. Yeah. Yes. Like big orange, red mm-hmm. balls. Yeah. Oh my God. We should make a promo video for the girlies like that. Oh my with God. Like the, wow. the sliding. Oh, that's yeah. so yeah. funny. I love Coach Carr. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, everybody but Miranda, who Larry Tudgman, fan, Ethan Crap, fan, oh. Claire, fan. <laughs> I love that show. You know who I don't fuck with though? From Life with Derek, Miss Casey. I thought oh. she was a pick Misha. I thought she was weird. The way she wanted to fuck Derek. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm all set on her. I'm so glad that that's coming to light now that other people think that because I remember even being at that age watching that show and being like, are they supposed to be dating? Mm -hmm. Like they had this weird sexual chemistry, Mm -hmm. but they were brother and sister. And I hated that her name was Casey. Were they step siblings? Yes. But they like... That was too kinky for Disney Channel to be trying. And that's why it didn't go very far. It was not their bestseller. I don't think I watched that. Mm. I would. It, it was one of those things. Uh, on my television, Channel 55 was Disney, 56 was Cartoon Network, and 57 was Nick. Yep. I would scroll through them all, and when Life with Derek was on and I didn't like something on 56 or 57, I watched it, but I suffered through it. Yeah. It wasn't my first choice ever. What was what channel was it for you, Bailey? 71 or 70. Yeah, 71. Mine was 30. Mm. Mm. I love hearing different channels. But yeah, Life with Derek, it, it was not their greatest hit. Mm-hmm. Some got a flop. Is there any other girlies we don't like from the Disney shows? Um, Lily from Hannah Montana. I oh, no. hated her. Yeah. No, I hated she, her. She just wasn't supportive of her pop star friend. And I think the episode that really pissed me off was when she found out she was Hannah Montana when she had to like do that face cream thing or put her face in the pie. Mm-hmm. If you found, she wasn't keeping that secret from you for like on purpose. She was protecting her own identity as a 13 year old pop star. And you should be like, oh my God, wow. Like, thank you for like trusting me to like trust the me with this information. you feel. 
She was a bitch. No, what I hate about her is like something we understand as the three girlies, meaning me, Bailey, and Lindsay, is like when Brandon has an opportunity, we are there to support him as his plus one. Lola Lufnagel did not understand that role, and she was a fucking bitch when Hannah would bring her to something. She ruined everything. She ruined all of her tennis matches. She was always getting into shit, and it's like, you're Mm -hmm. her plus one. You need to work for her in this moment, and she wasn't. Also, she lacked appreciation. My Lisa, I will never forget the episode where Lily wanted to make a recording for her mother singing one of the Hannah Montana songs. Mm. And Lily was so top ass with her voice that Miley (laughs) said, let me get up in the booth and I'm going to sing this song and you're going to pretend that you're singing it. And at the end of the day, what she should have done is just said, damn, thanks, Miley. You really ate that up. But no, she created an entire production, embarrassed herself in front of the entire school class, and then blamed Miley for it. All because she wanted to be a good friend. Mm -hmm. Her voice was so annoying, too. Hannah! (laughs) Like, Yeah, we, no. Did you guys watch on like outs. once they moved into like Hannah's new room and her and Lily lived together? I that did. was like kind of old. we were a little know. bit older. We were aging out of Hannah Montana like at that time. Three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which was not the great season. But Lily was even a bitch then. She moved in with them and she brought all her fucking shit to their I room. Do took this. over her bedroom. Like these side characters need to know that they're on the side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what I will say though, never mind. Let's keep it going. I'm, sure. I'm, I'm ready to move up to like positive. That's where mm-hmm. I was going to go. And mm-hmm. I was going to say, I loved the dynamic between London and Maddie yeah. mm-hmm. on Sweet Life. Mm-hmm. They both were, you know, interesting characters. I loved their friendship. I think they balanced out Zach and Cody super well. I don't have beef with either one of them. Yeah. Love I those agree. girls. I don't know if I have beef with anyone on that show. I think the janitor, Arwen, I thought he was a girly. Esteban was a girly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The mom was a girly. Mr. Breaking Mosby. her damn back every night to work for those kids. And all they had to do was sleep in that hotel room. And they couldn't do it for what shit. What was that yeah. one song she sang? I used to like sing when it. Stay yeah. the <laughs> that was that one. Oh, no, she, I love that whole yeah, show. Yeah, great cast. I still think like peak comedy is when they were doing the High School Musical episode. And everyone was telling Maddie that she didn't look like Sharpay. And mm-hmm. she was like, I look just like her. And oh, everyone wow. was saying she didn't. I like still think about that because I thought it was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Ashley Tisdale's iconic. I've rewatched iconic. that show like uh, like an embarrassing amount of times. Like <laughs> I don't, track. like I genuinely can repeat some episodes word for word. I was so in love with Dylan Sprouse as a child. You guys don't understand. Like it was, yeah. I, I was in love with him to the point where I would buy every J14, every Tiger Beat, every pop magazine. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I would cut out the... We all did it. We'd rip them off or cut them out and we'd piece them on our walls. And I would take gum and I would put it on my wall and I would put them on the wall. Bubba Bubba? Uh, you know, big league, hubba bubba, double men. <laughs> I did, but my dad always, it's going to peel off the paint. Anyways. <laughs> also, I, hold on. Speaking of Ashley Tisdale, though, we really do need to give it up for her hits because <laughs> he said, she said. He's crazy so good to me good to me no. insane and her extensions were so perfect early 2000s mm-hmm. trash like you knew that they were extensions but they worked mm-hmm. they were way better than that fuck ass bob with the bangs that she had going on in season one when she got that <laughs> weave i was like mm-hmm, that's her like she mm-hmm. was eating down and then what was that headstrong she had bangers yeah. and i don't think she got i don't think she got the attention she deserved no mm. But continue, sorry. I just had to get that out. No, I, I agree with that. Um, I remember my brother and I got into a fight and he took my picture, my favorite picture of Dylan Sprouse, oh. and he ripped it down the middle. And I cried. I went and told my dad and my father <laughs> made him glue the photo yes. back together until it looked perfect. Not tape it, glue, glue it. it. And I just have to say, like, I was a Sweet Life stan. Mm -hmm. Also, running back to Ashley Tisdale, I will say something that Disney Channel drawled on. Putting her in those clothes, and I get the (laughs) Disney aesthetic, I get the the mixing of the prints. They did My Girl Ashley so absolutely Hmm. filthy with her clothes. We're going to disagree, because I think her (laughs) outfit that she wore to work at that hotel ate down. Not that 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 red carpet. Not her red carpet. The Uggs. Yes. No, no, no. Her her tipped her her uniform went crazy. Yeah, I thought I have thought about being her for Halloween multiple times. Yeah, the tip like, off, it's cute. Mm-hmm, okay. Yeah, we're oh, on you the same with page. the headband. Honestly. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah. 
Um, I, this might be a hot take. I also loved Ren from Even Stevens. Yes. I thought mm-hmm. she was a dynamic female lead. I think six period, that whole, we went to the moon. Like she had numbers. She, she had numbers. I became a Christy Carlson Romano fan because of that shit. Like I had her first like album, her CD. Mm-hmm. I can't, so I remember that. Like, I remember there was one song I was just replaying on repeat. Somebody, this girl has pipes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, She's a podcast. Invite mm-hmm. us. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Now we can talk about the queen of Disney Channel for me. It better be right. Miss Raven Simone. Okay. <laughs> she, honestly, they should just name the Disney Channel network after her because Lisa. she put that entire fucking network, all of those billionaires, earn every single dollar because <laughs> of her. She is the most iconic child actress, Disney star, star of all time. And I stand on that. Raven was, she represented the girls, diversity, drama, sass, family, fun, fashion. Like she was that bitch. Like, I'm sorry, but Raven is her. Like no one compares. And you could try to compare queen against queen. You could put Hannah next to Raven. Mm -hmm. Raven's always going to take the cake. They they were, they were both great. Miley Cyrus is like my number one person in life but they were different raven had like physical comedy like i remember my dad sitting on the couch and genuinely like belly laughing at raven like yeah you just you don't make like tv shows like Mm -hmm. her anymore i used to act them out at recess like whatever yes like whatever episode aired i would be like okay like we're gonna my favorite episode to act out was when eddie got powers i used to love that episode but she was just the best her costumes her fashion, like everything. And she ate down. Like as a kid, I grew up watching the Cosby show. I'm sorry. And she played. She was She was on the Cosby show. And she was so cute and still so sassy and fun. And seeing her develop from a young girl into a teen who literally just bodied Disney. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Do you all remember Raven's hits? Like her personal songs? Because she ate down. Was it Backflip? Bro. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. (laughs) Double deck of bus. No. Oh my goodness. Wait, because you used to play the, remember they used to play music videos on Disney Channel? (laughs) I never hear Casey Because it was like uh, Corbin Blues Jump In. Yep. I yeah, remember the yeah. music video. Kind of it was the same no, wait, guy wait. that was the lead of um, Boys in Motion, like in the show. Mm-hmm. He played the love interest yes. in the backflip music mm-hmm. video. Wow, he did. Mm-hmm. This I, is my time. She ate that song yeah. up. Mm-hmm. I literally think I only went to see Princess Diaries 2 to see her in that. That's right. And she had the nice. best scene. Like it's the best, like most fun scene in the movie where they go like mattress sledding. Oh my gosh. And I feel so like fun. she's wearing like, I think it was like a red satin pajama. She looked breathtaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She carried. Do you guys remember when they would have like all the like lead people would sing a song together about like changing the world? Yeah. Yes. Yes. What was that one song? It was like a drop in the water. There was like one song about like Earth, like protecting the Earth, and it was they like all Earth for Earth Day. I mean, yes, yeah. and they all sang it. And Raven's part was the best she part. Wait, what Wait, was that song? I, remember, I forgot what it was. I forget. It was oh. honestly, if you think about it, they did that so that just stand up could happen. No, no not this. No. Not Lindsay, I have to sidebar for a second. I have to sidebar. If you ever want to make Lindsay just laugh, like if you ever want to get Lindsay in a good mood, you just put on the just stand up performance. Lindsay, the other, this just about once a month, I would say Lindsay turns this on. It happened the other night. Out of nowhere, Lindsay, it's midnight. Lindsay and I are up so late talking for whatever reason. We're watching like old school music videos. She has to put it on. She has to put on the Just Stand Up. And every time it's like the first time she's ever seen it. Like she, the second Beyonce comes on with her hair, Lindsay is in shambles. No, because what they did for Just Stand Up was they took the most iconic voices of our generation. Carrie Underwood, Mary J. Blige, Beyonce, Rihanna. Miley Cyrus. got a spot. Miley Cyrus, Natasha. I could go on and on. They sound awful. Like, it is the worst live performance I have ever heard. When Miley's like, forever, <laughs> ever. And like, the things Disney get Channel better. Like, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Natasha Bedingfield hits one note, and Nicole from the Pussycat Dolls looks at her with so much disdain. She's like about to throw up on the stage. Also, why did they do Natasha like that? They all clearly had a dress code memo, oh, yeah. and she gets up there in white jeans. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Y'all left her out of the group chat for what? Mm-hmm. If you're listening good and you don't know what we are talking about, go into, you stop this podcast, go watch it, and then come back and listen yeah. because you need to experience this. And first thing <sighs> you need to look at is Beyonce's hair. I would take a bullet for Beyonce, but what they 
did to her was terrible. It ain't down at the time. <laughs> Anyways, continue with the oh. pyramid. Um, yeah, I think Raven's at the top. Yeah. Honorable yeah. mentions are obviously Miley. Mm-hmm. Selena Gomez held down. Mm-hmm. Alex Russo. This really place had its moment for a little bit, but I yeah. feel like we were kind of... Older. That, yeah, mm-hmm. I felt that's so embarrassing. I was embarrassing. watching Euphoria mm-hmm. at that point. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys Why? know I love Selena. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you give like some, not not Disney Channel show credit, but kind of like Disney movie credit, Lindsay Lohan put her back into a lot of those, um, like Get a Clue, that was Disney Channel. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And then obviously well, yeah. Parent Trap. Yeah. Wait, Confessions of a Teenage good. Drama Queen. And Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen is a great movie. Yeah. Miss Lindsay A. Down. She served yeah. um, No, the Disney Channel original movies. I was talking about the one last night. <laughs> this is, I'm not going to say why I was mad about it. But that motocross one <laughs> um, <laughs> where the girl had lush. He had hair like Casey, long blonde hair, and decided to chop it all off to do motocross, wow. which I understand she wanted to be in a male sport, but like we could have just took a step back. Like she could have, like, <laughs> there could have been something she did not that. have to go full Brandon with the hair. No, like you know, that is like, so triggering to me. You know how like people like can't watch a movie if like an animal dies. I can't watch a movie if a girl gets her hair cut. Mm-hmm. Like I remember that movie, Remember Me, the Don't little even. sister has all of her hair cut off at a sleepover. Like, that made me sick. Like, sick to my stomach. That's like, in the same way that, like, military people coming home and surprising their kids, like, makes people cry on social media. If I see a video of someone unwillingly cutting their hair for whatever reason, I will literally sob. Because if I ever had to lose my hair... I would I would leave this earth. So like I can't handle stuff like that. Your yeah. hair holds a lot of emotion, a lot of security. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. makes you feel safe. Linz, do you got a would you rather? I sure do. Oh, here we go. All right, this one's a little tame, but maybe next week we'll get a little weird. Would you rather only be able to drink warm beverages for three months? Warm water, warm milk, warm coffee, you name it, it's warm. Or for three months, every single time you go outside, it is the most breathtaking day of all time. Sunny and 75, everyone's in shorts, people are walking their dogs, but all you feel is negative four. I mean, I am anemic. Think about what you would have to wear around everybody. Think of how uncomfortable you would be. For how long? Three months? Three months for both. Warm bevies. So you're like bundled up while everyone else is just like... If you want to, but do be. you like feel hot bundled up, or do you low key no. feel normal? No, you know, you're cold, freezing so you every need time to you bundle go outside. Up. Mm. Yeah, you could stay in for three months, but that, I mean, we did that for COVID, and I'm I'm not the same girl I used no, to be. No, when it was a few weekends ago, it was beautiful weather in Philly, like the first that you know that yeah. first yeah. springtime in Philly, and mm. I had the fucking flu, and me and my boyfriend had the fucking flu, and I'm not talking just like a little cough here. I literally thought I had to go be hospitalized. Like I was flu. literally so fucking sick. <laughs> And I felt like that meme of Squidward where he's looking out of the window <laughs> when he sees Patrick and SpongeBob dancing. That feeling of being like, it was so nice outside and I couldn't enjoy it because I was so sick was like so depressing. I honestly think I'd have to drink warm beverages. Yeah, I think I could do it too. Yeah. I have sensitive teeth, so like I don't really like ice like that. It just means warm alcohol, which does kind of make me want to vomit. See, that goes down easier. There we go, 75 hard. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Yep, I'm doing the warm beverages. I would pick that as well. Mm-hmm. I hate being cold. Yeah, I hate warm beverages front. more than anything, but it yeah. is what it is. Only three months. You know. Suck it up. Uh, what's on everyone's TikTok FYP? <laughs> J-Lo. Oh, my girl, J-Lo. It is time for her to look in the mirror and realize that she is not the bitch she thought she was. Ooh. Because... Oh, Jesus <laughs> Listen, for, for some unknown reason, Brandon has not experienced JLo on his For You page. I and haven't seen it. I, there are like, it is every video. And I know that sometimes it lives heavier on For You pages, but I can't escape it anywhere. Even on my work accounts, it's her. And she is just so in love with herself and in love with the movie she made that everyone told her not to make, that she made a documentary <laughs> about that movie that everyone told her not to make. What movie was that? Like this is me now, which is like oh, it's a like a like a movie. No, about there Jayla? she made a full sci-fi movie sci-fi. about a sci-fi movie retelling her life story through. It is literally the concept is these people work in a heart factory. <laughs> what the hell? But you may be confused because they don't actually make hearts. They just work for one giant heart. And there are workers that keep this one giant heart alive. And then in the beginning of the movie, I didn't watch it, but I've watched many breakdowns. There's this big explosion. And then the whole movie is like 
everything that follows after that, but it is a sci-fi retelling, a dance retelling. I was going to say, is it more like a She dance? dances the whole time. It's through dance and song that she retells the story of her life, and then... She made a documentary about her making that movie. So there are two <laughs> movies out right now about J-Lo, and neither of them are good. I'm going to say one thing about Miss J-Lo. First, I'm going to give her her flowers. The first time I ever realized that J-Lo was iconic was when I saw the Selena movie. Oh, Selena, my God. rest in peace, Best gone movie. too soon. That movie was excellent, and J-Lo ate down in it. I think that some of her songs are absolute bops, and I think that she is beautiful, and I think she's a great dancer. And with all that being said, I couldn't agree with you more, Casey. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is, I, I'm, I'm going to do a high-level recap in my, when I get home of those two movies that you just talked about I'll because send you I videos. need to see them. The thing with J-Lo is that she is so fucking hot. Yeah. Just because she was Jenny from the block doesn't mean that she's Jenny from the block anymore. There are mm -hmm. people who, like for example, <laughs> Jay-Z, he was on the block. You listen to some of his songs, like his life was difficult. You could, you could think of a ton of people in the entertainment industry. But you know what I don't hear about now? Him talking about his struggles. He has the hottest wife in Hollywood and kids. Like, go, just, just go live. Because she, like, Jay-Z, or, or I guess in general, she's trying to be relevant when mm -hmm. she's already, like, iconic enough that she doesn't have to keep doing this yes. shit. Like, mm -hmm. we, you're J-Lo. Like, you can just, like you said, like, mm -hmm. do your appearances, go to Dunkin' with Ben, keep it simple at bay. Mm -hmm. But when I saw her doing that thing where she takes her hair out, <laughs> Her pr nicely, like silk pressed hair and rough it up. Just like this, is how I used to wear it in the Bronx. Girl, running up and down the street. It's all like, dreams. No like, limits. Stop playing on my phone. Like, mm. like stop her playing hair. On my oh, have she's you not seen that video? Oh God, I have to do my. Research. I'm getting mad. It's, I'm, I'm getting saying, mad. The video. I was. I was at my limit before all of that. But the video of her with her fucking hair mm. is what made me want to talk about it on this podcast because at that point mm. I could not let it slide. It is. I literally think I want to be that for Halloween. I think I'm going to put my hair like that. And, and it was say, the clip when she was calling Ben Poppy. And um, that, that kind of, I said, all right, that's enough. She, that's oh I my God. Me. She wanted to tell the story of her life, but no company would produce it. So she Why produced it herself. the story of her life have to do with science fiction? Because she's she, from the Bronx. That's what she like made it. It's a heart factory. Literally her husband, Ben, was like, Jen, Duh. do not make this movie. Like, this is not a good movie. Do not tell this the story. Be Ben Affleck. And she paid $20 million to fund it herself. <laughs> Who's in it? No one. She asked all these posts. Like, there's this one section where oh. the astrology signs, she wanted a celebrity to be each astrology Oh, did sign. it never get made? No, it got made. She asked... So who's in the starring role? Her. She's playing herself. Wait a That's minute. It's like a one-man show with J-Lo. J-Lo. With green screen. I will send you... <laughs> let me... I will yeah. I need, I need, like, tea When we get this. done, I will send you... There's this one guy who breaks it down. It's this, the rendition I just told you, but... It will show you, and then you will start seeing it. I might it go on Amazon crazy. Prime and buy it. I asked Jake if we could watch it, and he was like, no fucking way. I was like, please. All right. Mm -hmm. Who else has an FYP this week? I'm a scroller. Oh, wait. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a creator, not a scroller. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on. I, like, I'm just like a big back girl, so all of my shit is Here food. We go. Um, candy salads. <laughs> I saw you made I yours. Saw you made mine. I, like, it's already gone. I made it yesterday. Um, I wow, you made a candy salad and you didn't ask anybody in the room if we wanted any. Babe. You, you didn't put it in not, cute I little made, boxes? I got five bags of candy for myself. Mm -hmm. um, no, but I've been, it's a specific girl. Her name's Elsie, I think, but she does um, Rocky Roads, and I'm so obsessed with it. <gasps> yes, I, see her. I love it. <laughs> oh my god, yes. I love it. It's like such a good ASMR, and like it's a UK thing. That's like, have you seen it, Brandon? I'm assuming not. No. So <laughs> it's um, it's not your typical Rocky Road ice cream, like the almost like the Moose Knuckles. What are they called? <laughs> moose tracks. Oh God, this whole episode is going to have to be severely edited. I'm so sorry to our team. <laughs> Talking about cotton balls. <laughs> Let's see. Um, no, so it's it's oh. not your standard. <laughs> I have something in my eye. Not your standard rocky. Oh, I'm going to quit this podcast. <laughs> Lizzie, stop laughing. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this girl Bailey is fully crying. <laughs> so she, she makes, makes Rocky Road. Yeah, so it's pretty much like <laughs> melted chocolate and a whole bunch of different like candies inside. So she'll do like Lucky Charms or like cookies. Anyways, it's just like magical treat bar. But <laughs> Lindsay is, you've so, got to leave Because Bailey's in tears. Like no one sees her. Brandon, what's on your for you page? I don't have one. I truly am a creator, he not really a scroller. Is. I'm so surprised on that. 
You really don't have that Sometimes much peace. I need to get back into it. I've just been, I've been on, you know, on a few journeys. Been mm-hmm. real busy. Yeah. Um, I guess Quiet on Set, the documentary, yeah. Yeah. which kind of like leads off of, you know, the conversation we had earlier. There's like been a bunch of clips. Um, Amanda Bynes is on my FYP mm-hmm. and I really just want everyone to leave her alone. Mm-hmm. Like if she wants to get her manicure license, like please just let that girl live. Whatever choices she's making, like I pray in the same way I pray for Britney Spears that Amanda will get a chance to tell her story, Mm -hmm. but we do not need to be circling on top of her and like taking pictures of her on the street and commenting Mm -hmm. on stuff. Like just leave that girl alone. If she didn't want to talk about the documentary, like just leave her alone, please. It's so crazy to me that we as a society have not evolved from the crazy paparazzi that like was back in the 2000s. Like I feel like when Britney Spears dropped, I don't think she dropped it, but when that documentary about Britney Spears dropped and it just showed how we were literally taking pictures of her during like a mental breakdown when she Mm -hmm. shaved her head and like everyone was tweeting and talking about like, Oh, you know, we shouldn't want, we shouldn't treat celebrities like this. And then it just doesn't change. Like every new young celebrity goes through this like horrific, like, And it's not just like your basic like, oh, you're catching them at their movie premiere or you're catching them grabbing coffee. It's like we like feed off of them like failing and struggling. And it's like, when can we just move on from that? Mm -hmm. It became the early 2000s where exposing people's traumas. And now it's like almost this weird layer of being fascinated by people's traumas. And it's like people's trauma is not your fucking entertainment. If they want to tell their story and they willingly agree to it, sure, that's their choice. And if they are totally fine with you being entertained by it and they want to share it, love that. But if someone like an Amanda Bynes or like a Britney does not want to tell every single thing that is their their life and their trauma is not your fucking entertainment. Like mm-hmm. leave them the fuck alone. It also does take a sick person to even look at something like that and laugh about it. Mm-hmm. Like when I see Amanda Bynes show up on my For You page, it's usually her own videos. I think she deactivated her TikTok, but mm-hmm. the videos are still circling, like resurfacing. Whenever I see them, I actually like feel heartbreak. Mm-hmm. I look at her because you, you think about her as Amanda and who she is now is just this person who's, I guess, really trying to recover from whatever she's gone mm-hmm. through. Like mm-hmm. you said, we don't know. She hasn't talked about it. Mm-hmm. But I can't imagine somebody getting a sick kick out of laughing at her or making it deep um, about something they know nothing about. Mm-hmm. I think that's really, really sick. Yeah. Yeah. I just want peace for all of those people. I know. Yeah. It's Literally. It's so yeah. sad. It's yeah. like so sad too because like you watch those shows as a little kid like we just talked about all the Disney shows and like mm-hmm. even when we talk about how fun Zach and Cody was and then you hear that Dylan Sprouse was being bullied for being overweight like mm-hmm. it's just like crazy like how like the industry <clears throat> like really from the outside looking in is like you just never knew all of that yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. It's hard to like when I think back like looking at all those shows I'm like wow I love them so much but I didn't like all that like when I was mm-hmm. watching that documentary I was like shit I forgot about I remember these specific um, segments like in all that it was like yep. the popcorn the pants yeah, yeah. like the remember, sugar yeah and I remember all that and I'm thinking I remember that sugar scene so mm-hmm. cause I'm like oh I would, like I was a big kid so I was like I would love to have sugar in my mouth but it's sick to think that it wasn't for a young audience like well, for those little things this is really interesting I went home a few days ago and I talked to my dad about this he's real trendy and into the Netflixy things so he's like have you watched the thing he called it the drink bill thing and I was like yeah I did watch it and he said what did I always tell you as a kid and I said back to him that my dad always used to say I don't want you watching the Amanda show and my parents never restricted television for me I mean I'm a clown so of course I watched the Amanda show Brandon and I bought an Amanda show episode in our apartment this year because we thought it was so funny so he never took it from me but he always said Amanda teaches you to be sassy I think is what he said as a kid but watching it back as an adult and then watching that documentary my dad said he specifically remembered that sugar episode and he was wondering why the kids were doing that Mm -hmm. and was so disturbed by the entire production of Amanda so it's interesting like even as a kid like my dad knew this is weird why am I letting my kid watch this but I still got to watch it especially like all the foot references so like Mm -hmm. just like now that I know like the people have a sick like they like feet in the fed like that's so sick and like to have a like close like I don't, I don't know that's like so mm. weird to me and if you met in like a yeah. innocent way that doesn't even really Amanda's jacuzzi is kind of weird when Bizarre. you really think about it like she was what 
12 in a mm-hmm. bikini eating spaghetti sometimes next to a big hairy guy like yeah or a sumo wrestler or something yeah. like that it's so like yeah it's just it's weird because there was like <laughs> so sick i feel like in there was such a line and it just went the wrong way because during that era like random comedy was funny mm-hmm. like that's what made i carly's it like still w- is walking into a room holding a pickle and being like i'm gonna do a dance like yeah. that was the comedy back then so like Sure, like sitting in a hot tub eating spaghetti, like sort of on paper was funny back then. But when you put it in the context of like her next to an older guy and you know that everyone on set was a predator, like Mm -hmm. it's like they they had the the formula and then they just did it all wrong and Mm -hmm. they just took the wrong step and made it a terrible experience for everyone who like went through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, does anyone have an immunity necklace to go from a sad note to an evil note? No, sir. Not <laughs> I have one small one. I'm clean. This Let's week. hear it. If I put on my Instagram story that I'm asking for advice and I put a little question box and I tell you exactly what I want to know, why are you DMing me what I just asked instead of putting it on the question box that is literally on my story for you to tell me what you want to tell me? Oh, I know you're irritated. If you are continuing your message, like, hey, my message wasn't long enough to fit in the box, totally fine. I'd love Mm. to hear what more you have to say. But if I am asking for answers, I want to find all of them in one place, which is why I put a question box (laughs) on my story. If you want to start DMing me outside of the box, then I can't find all the responses because yours are in my DM and everyone else's is over here. So if there is a question box on someone's story, (laughs) just put your answer in the fucking box. Oh, wow. Anyway. Listen, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it, Casey. <laughs> I have one as well. And I'm a little bit nervous to say this, so I'm going to try to sugarcoat it as much as possible. Speaking because I live by the standards. You don't yucky someone's yummy. And I'm about to say that I find something very yucky that mm-hmm. majority of the people in this country find very yummy. <sighs> I think New York City is so mid- <laughs> Mid at best. I think New York City is one of the most prevalent modern day scams that has ever existed. I'm going to your apartment. I I go to these people's places and I'm like, you pay this much to live in this small of a spot. On top of that, they don't have air conditioning. They have rats. I'm like, (laughs) I'm sorry. It is not that great here. I had one of the most miserable experiences of my life. And this has been repeated. Like when I went for fashion week, Lindsay and I were damn near in tears by the end of it. I was like, get me out of here. A rat ran across my foot. It is, listen, I understand. I, it's such a social scene. It's a great place to meet people. It's a massive, you know, city. I don't want to call it beautiful because I don't think it is. I think there's some parts that are pretty. Central Park is gorgeous. But beyond that, I, I just, I don't get the appeal. I think you pay so much to honestly get so little. And I just don't understand why. I, I just think the whole city is so mid. I think the food in Philly is just as good, if not better. And they're always so pretentious about that. And pretty much every one of my friends who's visited has been like, yeah, this is just as good, if not better. I think it's just exorbitant. The crime is just as high. It's just as dirty. Oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. I just, no shade. I love all of my New York fans. You guys, like I said, I don't want a yucky or yummy. Like, keep on, like, you know, keep the peace. But it is not for me. Mm-hmm. And that's that. <laughs> that was good, Brad. Yeah. That was good. A little scared. Yeah, it's okay. Get, might get some blowback on that. But brave. not yucky and y'all's yummy. Y'all have fun. But it is <laughs> it is not for me. No, that's tea. That's tea for real. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just blacked out. All right. Well that's it for today's episode i had a blast with everyone (laughs) just remember to keep everything between us girlies please (laughs) bye guys